Welcome everybody to another Voice of Nick live stream. We're going to be playing more of The Witcher 3 today. And we have just done a book reading marathon in The Witcher 3. We're currently in a bookstore looking for some mission item that we're not even sure what it is. I am excited to find out what it is though. If you guys don't know the channel, it's called The Voice of Nick. I play video games live three times a day and seven days a week. It's all story focused games on here and I don't talk over the story or cutscene moments but they are what we call ultra-blind playthroughs, so I do request that no one utilize their own pre-existing knowledge of the game or suggest what to do in the game whether or not they've played it before. If you want to see more of what happens on the channel, type exclamation mark games in the chat. You'll get a full list of all eight concurrent gameplay series going now, including The Witcher 3. And if you like what you see today, don't forget to hit that follow button. Up top you see a follower goal of seven. We're currently at one, so we have tink broken ground on that follower goal. The 25th entry in the Twitch playbook is out right now. It is called Learn to Love the Grind of Twitch Streaming. And that one's gonna help you to stay in Twitch for the long haul because you won't get burned out on the process of building your channel. Now, if you don't know the Twitch playbook, it is a free pro uh, podcast that I created to help all of you guys in this community either create your own Twitch channels from scratch or improve on an existing channel if you already have one. Every episode is 10 minutes or less, so it's very bite-sized and it's been coming out for the last 25 weeks in a row, so there's plenty of it. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, all the major podcast platforms by searching the Twitch Playbook, or you can type exclamation mark playbook into the chat. You'll get a link directly to it. Welcome in to the show, everybody. We are going to... Let's actually load up The Witcher 3 right now because the, the loading screen takes a decent chunk of time. Azra Tundra, welcome into the stream. Welcome Decaf into the stream. Azra Tundra getting that secret voice of Nick... Uh, hype, cringe, oh, decap getting that rather. As a tender getting some cringe or some rather voice to make hype and a whole bunch of pride emotes. Good stuff. Um, and it looks like As a tender may have changed the username color, possibly, or maybe it's just a glitch on my thing. But I see your most recent post is a different color. Back to the blue. I like it either way. The classic azure. Oh, a new, new one. Ciri had reached Novigrad. A lone attempt to find her in the Norse largest city would certainly fail. But Geralt had friends he could count on. The Witcher decided to contact Triss Miracle. Did the Emperor's spy tell us that? I don't think we've been told that. That might be the thing they're about to tell us in this mission. I think they may have jumped the gun here. I think they may have jumped the gun. How are you guys doing tonight? What's everybody up to on that Eastern time? Late night Eastern time watch through of the Witcher Trace. Good stuff. The Witcher. I'm interested if we're going to get to go to Skellige, because we've heard a lot about it. And they keep referencing it in uh, in here. Damn, look at those textures. <laughs> look at those textures. Hey, Ezra Tundra! Celebrating the one year Anna Subversary. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you so much to Ezra Tundra. Can we get some hype in that chat? Whoops. Hype in that chat. And can we get some Voice of Nick hype in there as well? For Ezra Tundra, thank you so much for the support, and it is a tier two sub as well, which means you have the voice of Nick Cringe. Can we get some cringe hype in there to celebrate that amazing milestone? Thank you so much to Azur Tundra for the continued support. Now, as a member of the Latte Club, you get a whole bunch of stuff on this channel, including the voice of Nick emotes, two uh, exclusive voice of Nick emote plus all the other emotes. It's not only two anymore, it's a bunch of emotes now. So you get uh, the Voice of Nick emotes, legendary status in the chat and Discord, 200 meatballs, higher chance to win in the heist minigames and ad-free streams. You also have the handsome sub badge in front of your name, which is upgraded to the even handsomer 12 month sub badge. Thank you so much to Ezra Tundra. It is very highly appreciated. Thank you for the continued support. Getting that cringe in there. Decap getting that cringe hype. We got a lot of love in that chat right now. Thank you so much to Ezra Tundra. That is amazing. Wow, what a day. Has, I wonder if it, um, so you basically got it because you're on the East Coast, so that means that it just uh, it just switched over to the 12th month, uh, like an hour or two hours ago, because it would be 2.07 a.m. 
Thanks so much for all the laughs, chuckles, giggles, everything. Thank you so much, Ezertundra. That really, uh, it really means a lot. Continued support, being on the streams, hanging out, everything. Being a mod, being an admin, all very, very much appreciated. Oh, we have even more. We have even more books to read. The Merry Adventures of Muriel the Lovely Harlot, illustrated. The Merry Adventures of Muriel the Lovely Harlot, adorned with humorous engravings. Hmm. All right, let's read it. Aha. Uh -huh. On one occasion, Muriel went to a journey to see her auntie in Maribor, accompanied by her nursemaid. Their path took them through a forest, and in this forest lived a raucous troop of bandits. This infamous group was led by Flynn Selms, and all the king's men had been unable to bring them to justice. Alas, such was Muriel's great misfortune that these bandits chose to attack her carriage. Muriel's nursemaid was old, blind, and deaf. She did not wake when a tree fell in front of their carriage with a loud thud, nor when the bandits fought their fierce battle against their guardsmen. When Flynn ripped open the carriage door with his muscular arms and stepped inside, Muriel had to deal with the danger herself. Make our guests comfortable, young lady, the old nursemaid muttered in her sleep. Muriel obediently carried out her instructions. Oh. Alright. There's illustrations that are supposed to be with it too. So what we're doing right now is we're looking for a book that was given to us by like a, a secret person. The treatment of fern furuncles through cauterization, a study. The treatment of furuncles through cauterization, a study. Alright. Whoops. Where's the furuncles book? Have we already read it? Oh, here we go. Everyone's seen a boil, usually more than they'd care to. These deformities don't just mar your beauty, they can be signs of disease, or even the diseases cause an epicenter. If your lungs wheeze and your heart flutters, or if you're just sick in, of pustules, you can carve them off and be free of this ill for good. When you go to carve off a boil, use a sharp knife which you've had a dog lick thoroughly beforehand, for a dog's tongue works wonders in healing wounds. You've got to be brave as you go about it, slicing as confidently and as steadily as if carving off a hunk of cheese. Then quickly cauterize the resultant wound with a red-hot poker. Don't pay any mind to screams or tears. Pus, bile, and other humors need to be gathered in a basin, then dumped in a pit, and the pit covered, else the illness might return. <laughs> wow. Okay. Decaf, after just finishing the rewatch of the Barbie stream, now working on a Lego ghost zombie skeleton pirate and their ghost pirate ship. Nice! Is that from the Barbie stream and not from the pirate stream? I would have thought that would be from the pirate stream. Either way. Sounds cool. My Manifesto, The Life of Jacques de Aldersberg. My Manifesto. Must be it. There's a letter inside. Aha! Here we go. The reasons for choosing Jacques de Aldersberg as Grandmaster remain a mystery. The Order of the Right Rose had gone through a crisis in those times and was on the verge of collapse, so one might guess that the Brethren wished to have someone decisive as their leaders, someone with a clear vision. Daldisberg was precisely such a man. One of his first decisions was to change the Brotherhood's name to the Order of the Flaming Rose. The most puzzling aspect, however, is that the Order and the King himself decided to trust a man who, for all intents and purposes, had appeared out of nowhere. They say he was a wanderer, an itinerant priest who moved crowds with his speeches declaiming non-humans. They say he worked miracles and showed his flock visions of a world destroyed by the White Frost. He was undoubtedly a man of great charisma, one instilled with unshakable principles which he in turn tried to instill in others. Was he truly a source? Was he indeed gifted with raw magic talent? That we will never know for certain. So what we seem to have intuited was that from the first... They seem to have been implied that in the first Witcher game when Alvin disappeared he went back in time and then became, or he was the guy who always was Jacques de Aldersberg, uh, the leader of the Flaming Rose Order. So it's interesting that somebody would put a note in here because it would have significance to Geralt. Do you guys think it was more inspired by the pirate stream? Good stuff. Letter from A. A. A would be, I don't know. 
Oh, is it actually from Alvin? Oh, crap. Witcher. In the ocean of possibilities, some events are more likely and some less. It is not easy to fish out for the first, not even when one's intellect stretches through all time and space. I left this letter for you in hope that, despite all odds, you will come across it one day. For I must warn you, mankind is threatened. The prophesied destruction by the White Frost is not just the babbling of some mad she -elf. Perhaps I will have the opportunity to convince you of this in person. If not, I must rely on this letter, which you will read many years from now, at a time when you know more than you did when we first met. Knowing that nothing will save the world except preparing its entire preparation for this catastrophe, the old tales say a child of the Elder Blood can stave off the danger, but I tried and failed. Ever since I have been haunted by a hideous vision, a crowned rape, the spectre of my failure. I was the chosen one, and the chosen one failed. You and your brotherhood are our only hope. When the time of the wolf's blizzard comes, men shall perish, and only the Ubermen will survive. Your duty is to give the world Ubermen. Whatever you think of me, do not fail as I have failed. Oh. A. So, that's pretty creepy. From an old friend, interesting. Wow. The old friend is Alvin. I guess Alvin must have written the letter before we killed him in the future, or in the present. He wrote it in while he was living out his life after he had traveled to the past. So wait, where's message from an old friend? Here we go. Gerald stopped by a certain Novigrad book merchant whose owner recognized him at once. He said someone left, left a book with him a long time ago with instructions to give it to Geralt if he ever got the chance. This naturally piqued the witcher's curiosity. Sadly, the book dealer did not know the book's exact present location, only that it had a red cover and that Geralt should look for it in his stack of dusty tomes and manuscripts. Geralt found the book, and inside it, a letter from someone he had once known. Though he gave no outward sign of it, this filled him with touching recollections of old times. To this day, I don't know who the old letter was, the old friend was, nor what he had written in the letter. And that's a shame, for judging by Geralt's behavior, therein lies a very interesting tale. Damn, so it is all but confirmed then that Alvin was Jacques de Aldisberg, the leader of the Order of the Flaming Rose in The Witcher 1. Very interesting. Moribundia, the vampire's the last likeness. You know the Thereupon, Isabella took Edward's glistening visage in her hand and embraced his icy lips, which were twisted into a cynical grin. Forgive me, my love, she whispered, stifling the sobs, heaving her bosom. But my heart doth long with fiercer passion for yon werewolf, for whom thou hastest with all thy, vi thy vampiric thouness. Tis for the best, spoke Edward, shifting his pale face toward the equally pale moon. With me, my life was, never, was ever endangered. With yon werewolf, thou shalt know the peace and happiness. Edward turned around and took a step towards the exit, but Isabella grabbed his wrist and bade he stop. The touch of her hand was so tender, his heart newly began to beat anew after centuries of deathly stillness. There's more, spoke she, averting his penetrating gaze. I am with child. Well, here we go. This is uh, Witcher Twilight, ladies and gents. You guys saying no one said we were going to be reading Twilight. You can't escape it. Not even in, in Temeria or wherever we are. Novigrad. Hey! Yes? Hello. Hello. Hey! Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey! Hey! What splendid diversity reigns the kingdom of cheese? The ripened curd can be white or blue, hard or soft, fresh or aged, from the milk of cows, sheep, or goats, brined, pickled, or untouched. This list could go on to the end of time. And each of them, every last slice, every morsel and crumb, not only brings the, with it an unmatched rush of sensory experience, but in the right hands can be made to reveal the universe's most closely guarded secrets. For cheese, like the innards of sacrificed animals, the flight of a swallow or vivid dreams can be used for divination. The depth and size of a cheese's holes reveal when rains will fall the coming year, while the color of mold veins tells you whom shall love whom. And the scent of a hard grana padano predicts which army will vanquish its foes and which shall perish. The best divination, however, is done using the ancient method of fondue. One must simply melt two different kinds of cheese, preferably a mental and gruyere, in white wine, or in a pinch in a dry apple cider. Then one must use a long stick to immerse a morsel of bread in the resultant thick soupy mixture, and all while keeping in mind the question, what shall my child be like when he or she, in, as the case may be, grows? Then bring the cheese-covered morsel to, of bread up to a candle so that it casts a shadow on the wall. 
The shape will provide a sure and easily understood answer to your query. Oh. This sounds just like a person who's trying to sell cheese. A person who's running out of uh, business ideas for their for how to get rid of their cheese stocks. Oh yeah, look, these books did have red covers. They didn't lie about that. Interested in books? You don't look the scholar, but well, we've ones with drawings as well. Mm. Damn, that was rude. Let's see these books of yours. Although I guess at this point in history, you know, assuming it's based on medieval sort of history, not a lot of people would actually be able to read. Okay, we got a couple new books here. But we can't sell anything back to him. He's not a secondhand book seller. He's first hand only. Farewell. Whoa! How'd I end up here? Alright, what do we got? One over here, one over here. The little peasant who confounded his lord. Winter was on his way, and the lord once again started to think about what to do to oppress his people even more. One morning, at the crack of the cockerel's crow, he rode out to the village in a carriage pulled by two black horses. <laughs> With his trusted page at his side to act as his scribe, the earth was sodden and a cruel mud covered the road. So the lord, not wanting to dirty his shiny new boots, stayed in his carriage and sent his page to do his busy. When they arrived at the village, the page dismounted from the carriage, a paper covered in thick ink crushed in his hands. He nailed the paper to the first hut he saw, and since he did it with a hammer, a peasant boy named Reuben soon opened the door up to see what was the matter. <laughs> the boy was twelve years of age and had a straw-colored shock of cow-licked hair and a freckled face with ruddy cheeks. Well, what do you want? grumbled the page, looking at Reuben's shirt, which was covered in the same filth as the else in the village. Well, uh, nothing rightly, Reuben sh shrugged. Thing is, sir, this is me own. Then get inside it, the boy wasn't scared, and instead stood on his doorstep looking at the piece of paper. So what's this, sir, a letter? The boy asked. Read it and find out for yourself, the scribe said, growing angrier, though Reuben didn't seem to notice. I feared I can't, sir, don't know how. What the devil's taking you, scribe, the lord hollered. He was still sitting in his carriage and hadn't heard the conversation. Clearly he was bored. And who else says he doesn't know how to read? I, cause he don't. Reuben confirmed and took two steps towards the carriage, his bare feet seeking into the muddy grey muck. And the ones inside, do they? questioned the lord. Where do you reckon they'd learn a thing like that, my lord? The peasant asked, perplexed, for he had always thought the great lords like that must surely know everything. So who in your village does know how to read? asked the lord, growing even more irritated. Not no one, my lord. Scribe, said the lord, leaning far out while leaning on his carriage door. Could you explain to me how I am to enforce my declaration on people who do not know how to read and write? I don't know, my lords, the scribe said, taking a step back, as if he expected the lord to jump out of the carriage and assault him. The fault was not his, but the lord was in the habit of beating his scribe when he grew angry, no matter the cause. <laughs> I like that, uh, <laughs> author, that, that narrator guy. Naranson, son of Gunnestad. When he awoke, he saw before him an endless swath of blue. On the horizons, the sky merged with the glassy sea. The storm had passed, and so the longship and all its crew. He never learned how long he had lain unconscious in the lifeboat. The sun had scorched his skin a purplish red and turned his lips to brittle parchment. He was overcome by a great thirst, but there was nothing on the boat with which to quench it. He had been spared from so much, only to die now. No, Naranson was the son of the great Gunnestad, and he would never give up. He had twenty springs under his belt when he embarked on this voyage. When was that? Long ago? Very long ago. Back when his friends still lived. When he still had his left hand, not his stiff stump. When his beard was still red and not streaked with silver. The drive for glory which had driven him from his family home had demanded a high price. Naranson had never given a second thought. But now, alone in the lifeboat, in the middle of an endless ocean, he felt tired. He wanted to once again set eyes on the farm which he had been raised. To see the eyes of his mother, who had lulled him to sleep with the tales of the deeds of the legendary heroes. Now he had become one of them. Now mothers would tell their sons about him. His greatest dream had become reality. He should have been happy, but he wasn't. Perhaps if he had known then what travails and hardship awaited him. Yet no man can know his future. One thing is sure, however. Even if Naranson 
had known what horrors this life had in store for him, he never would have chosen another. He was the son of the great Gunistad, and he had walked the path of glory, from which one can never stray, no matter what the cost is. Azatandra saying, love the Witcher 3 readings by the voice of Nick. Thank you so much, Azatandra. I, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of great books in this game. There sure are. We could do like a, a mini series of like children's stories, <laughs> all all from the Witcher 3's uh, bookshelves. All clips of the of the books that we've read. Uh, do you guys think did it say we could play Gwent with him? Yes, it did. So uh, let's do that right now. I wanted to make sure we read those books. Back? But thank you for uh, <laughs> reminding me because I was about to walk out of the store. Let's do it, baby. Up for a few rounds of Gwent. Here we go. Do you guys think, what about the books from Red Dead? Those are good too, those are really good. There seem to be a lot more books in The Witcher 3 though, so there's more opportunities. Red Dead's books are, I love the way those are written though. Probably the most rock ish thing in the game were the books in Red Dead. Okay, so we don't need this or this. Yeah, we wanna get rid of these element cards. We definitely don't need this. Let's get rid of this. Oh, we got Yennefer, nice. Okay. Let's give it our best shot. Zero. Oh crap, it lets him draw two cards? Is that what it said? Oh man. So we're not gonna beat him by attrition. That much is clear. But we're also not likely to beat him by force. What's our play here? If we do... Huh. Damn. Hmm. Let's waste one card. I don't really know what we can do. We have to hope he puts out his good cards now. Leader ability. He uses leader ability. Why would he do that? Oh man, we really want him to waste his cards, but I don't have anything else to put out right now. We could put our leader ability out. Should we use our leader ability? No, we're gonna pass. So we lost this round. That means we have to win the next two rounds. But he has the more cards. Clearly lost. All right. Um, he just has a lot of cards that spawn other cards. <sighs> yeah, this is pretty rough. All right. Um, If he puts anything in the archery row, then we can screw him, but he probably knows that we have impenetrable fog available. Oh, he passed? All right then. So we now have, we lost Yennefer. We're, we're almost certainly gonna lose this. I think we get to draw one card though. Yeah, there we go. All right. 
We have 20 points worth of damage, and he has six cards. It's very unlikely that we win this. And we can't even use Impenetrable Fog because uh, we have mostly archers. Oh god, okay. So we can only remove 10 points worth of stuff from his... Man, we're getting screwed. All right, here we go. Ah. Oh. Yeah, we, like, it's a guaranteed loss right now. Because he has 10 points that can't even be altered. If he has one single more point of damage, then we can't do anything against it. Yeah, he's playing something from his discard pile. Like, we, we literally don't have any, we don't have enough points. Yeah. It's a good deck. I'll give him that. The people in Novigrad seem to have better decks. That's all we got. Well, we'll try again another time. Wanted Triss Marigold, whoa. Stay out of the sewers. We would like to inform all venerable residents of Novigrad that the last week, the temple god fished three bodies out of the following descriptions out of the sewers. Male of moderate age, clad in rich apparel with a birthmark on his upper shoulder. Female, elderly, dressed in a blue nightshirt, numerous blunt trauma wounds all over her body. Male, young, naked, indecent tattoo on his groinal area. These bodies will be examined and identified by the month, the end of the month, then cremated. We would like to take this opportunity to warn our dear townsmen and townswomen against entering the sewers. Despite the continual efforts on the part of our brave temple guard, they remain an extraordinarily dangerous place. The city council of the free city of Novigrad. Bulk prose delivery. Tuesday next, a deliverer of the latest Kidwini prose will be made to the warehouse near High Rock Square. Only bulk buyers welcome. Wanted, Triss Merigold. Eyewitness testimony has confirmed that Triss Marigold of Maribor, known as the 14th of the Hill, a member of the infamous Lodge of Sorceresses, is currently in residence in our fair city. Anyone in possession of information about her place of hiding, plans, or accomplices is obligated by law, both divine and human, to report to the nearest outpost of the Temple Guard at once. And whoever helps the witch by giving her food or shelter help shall burn alongside her. May the following hereby be known. The production, possession, or sale of any magic items whatsoever, exempli gratia, amulets meant to bring good fortune, desire intensifying potions, dolls used to cast curses on their likenesses, and so forth, is strictly forbidden and shall be punished with the utmost severity. Newcomers are hereby informed that Novigrad one worships the eternal fire and only the eternal fire. The practice of any other religion will be treated as an act of heresy and punished to the full extent of the law, that is, by public consideration. Particularly forbidden is the wearing of the symbols of other deities, the conducting of rituals in their honor, or preaching of other faiths. Lessons in Savoir-Vivre Which knife should be used when eating fish? Is it fitting for a lady to walk without hose in hot weather? Should a white wine glass be held by the stem or by the cup? Anyone aspiring to rub shoulders with Novigrad High Society will receive answers to these and other similarly vexing questions for a trifling fee by inquiring with Count Nogat, a world authority and manners of savoir vivre. All right. Oh. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Someone to show them around Novigrad. You red wine. So this white lady mission is um significantly above our level, suggested level. 
it's over here. So I suppose we probably want to not be in Novigrad right now. Find out where Siri is. But they just told us where Siri is in the, in the menu screen. They said that Siri was in Novigrad, but we'll forget about that for now. Suggested level 16, okay. Pyres of Novigrad is now within our reach. Bloody Baron, hunting a witch. Ask the residents of Midcops about her. Where's Midcops? Holy crap, this is far away. Is this Midcops? I assume it is. And where's the Bloody Baron? He's over here. Oh, we've been to this city, but I don't think we were allowed in yet. Okay, so let's go do that one, I guess. Man, there's a lot of stuff far away from here. Hey Roach, what are you doing? Why are you up there? Get down! Roach, get over here! There you go. Come on, Roach. Here we go. Miserable and hungry. Just you wait. We can't go in there. What is happening so here? Fast, this guy's so excited. Is he just excited about this lady? This trumpet? <laughs> He's just cheering at her. I guess that the whole the whole crew here. Wow wow, what have we here? Alright. Get back on Slower. him. Let's go. I guess some people just get really excited about the arts, you know? It's good. Patrons of the arts. Ooh. Whoa! What is this? A fight club? Name's Geralt. Patty Gruber. I'm a bookie. I trust you're here to fight. Oh, we just stumbled upon the fight club. What can you tell me about these fights? Bouts are held in Novigrad, the Skelliger Isles, and in Velen. Each region has its champion, but to face the said champion, you must first defeat three other contenders in that region. Defeat the champions of Velen, Skelliger, and Novigrad, and you will win the prestigious title of Champion of Champions. It sounds like we will get to go to Skelliger then. Oh, we can bet? Okay. I'm ready. Hear that? A fight at last! Our champion, Archibald O'Neill, to face Geralt! Fight! Here we go. Oh, Jesus. I wasn't ready. I wonder if I can parry him. Oh, yeah, look at that. Send some hearts, ladies and gents. This guy is significantly above our level. But we're actually getting him pretty well. Uh oh. That's it. Get those parries. Yes! As a Tundra sending those hearts. Thank you, As a Tundra. Almost got him, actually. He's level 18. We're level 8. Man, the fighting in this game is way better than the other two. 
Got him. Good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new champion. The man who dethroned Archibald O'Neill. Bravo to Geralt, a beautiful bout. Want to be crowned the best in Novigrad? Who do I gotta fight? You two are the local champions to choose from. Pile Driver and Captain Mortimer of the Temple Guard. And here's your prize. Hmm. Pile Driver is a heck of a name. Oh, there's Archibald. It's clear as the eternal fire. How is business? Simple. Oh, so we have to go find them, I guess. We can't just like go. In in The Witcher one or two, you could just fight them all in the same spot. Gaming hour, welcome to the stream. Let's get an exclamation mark high for gaming hour. Join the show. We are playing The Witcher three. Wait, so now where do we find this Fight Club thing? High stakes Gwent tournament. Fists of Fury. Here we go. Georgius George, Iron Mortimer. Those aren't the people he just said. Okay, so yeah, they're in different spots. But we'll do those missions later. Whenever we're like truly in Novigrad. We're not actually like doing stuff in Novigrad right now. So we want to go to the Bloody Baron. Alright, here we go. Do you guys think there's a Marvel villain called Pile Driver? It's part of a team called the Wrecking Crew. Nice. What is his like is he a wrestler? Is that his thing? Yeah, looking for someone else, what? What's that frown about? Come on, Roach. Come on, Roach. Hey, that's what I said, Carol. Ah, oh. greetings. What? Oh. Oh, you don't. Oh wait, did we ever fix our swords up? Yes. Okay, good. That would be bad if we didn't even do the thing we came into town to do. Alright, so... Coffee drinking time. Wait, I thought this thing's supposed to follow the road. Hey, Roach, hey what are you there. doing? There you go. Oh, now there is no road. Uh oh. Now I'm stuck. He has super strength, decap saying, and nearly unbreakable skin and bones. I feel like that's a prerequisite for most um, superheroes or villains, isn't it? Doesn't Wolverine also have that? And also, like, most villains. Ooh, as a tundra, I got Nick and Gerald on the big screen listening through my wireless headphones. Good times. Sounds amazing. All the glory, the full glory of Geralt of Rivia. Go, go. Gary saying he sounds like Tombstone. True, yeah, Tombstone is one of those guys with a near unbreakable Hulk on the hero side. Definitely also has nearly unbreakable skin and bones. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, like every Sandman. Nearly unbreakable because you can't, <laughs> you can't, uh, you know, affect his skin or bones. Um, what's another villain? 
Not Doc Ock, not Green Goblin. Um, maybe not all superheroes and villains, but a lot of them would. Luke Cage, near unbreakable skin and bones. Does he have any other traits, or are those his like main things? Black Panther, nearly unbreakable if you uh, have his, his if he has the suit on, or Iron Man. Let's go. What is that? Is that a shrine? Wait, get off the horse, Kitty. Roots are gonna rot my gut. Do you guys think he's like the least impressive member of the team? Oh, okay, so he's not like that unique, I guess you're saying. What is this town we're in? In at the crossroads, okay. So we've definitely been here before. I wonder if there's any new uh, Gwent cards. So this is where we originally like visited, I think, at the beginning. Do they still have the Temerian uh, lilies on display? <laughs> hmm. Rechange? Oh, this is not the same place. Oh, this guy does Gwent now. Nice. Wouldn't mind a drink. Show me what you got. So he does not have uh, Gwent cards. But we should probably purchase a bunch of food and drink items. 290 that cost us. What the heck? Why did that cost so much money? I'm not buying that. They say you play cards. They don't speak idly then. Times are tough, and rare cards are often worth more than a fistful of gold. So, will you play? I feel like we might have played Let's. this guy before. But I can't pass it up. Alright, here we go. Scorch is a good card. Biting Frost I don't care about. I don't know why I even have those in my deck, honestly, if I never use them. I might as well take them out. I guess I will take them out. Alright, let's put in a bad card. Try and draw this guy out. We don't have tr uh, Yennefer, but it's possible we could draw her. Very low odds, but we could. Place on your opponent's battlefield. Draw two cards from your deck. Okay, so if we're going to do that, we have to know that we're throwing the game soon. Um... I just don't know a great time to ever do that. Let's try it now. Damn. We didn't really get a lot of great cards. You can look at three, randomly look at three of my cards. Hmm. If we hypothetically wanted to beat him, we'd have to use at least two more cards. You know, I could scorch him and remove my own card. That'll be a bold move. I like that idea. What does this guy do? He doesn't do anything. What if I scorch this guy? Oh, I can scorch both of the same amount. Whoa, that was good. Okay, here we go. And he... Revived my guy? Oh, he revived my guy in order to use him against me. Okay, that kind of messed up my plan now. Uh-oh. 
Hmm. But now what if I use this? Let's put in another sword wielder. We're really gonna be putting all our eggs in one basket here. Let's just do this. We do have a clear sky in case he tries to screw us. Oh, he passed. All right. So now all we have to do is win one more round and we have a lot of cards with which to do it. Good. Okay, here we go. We got another clear sky, great. Destroy your enemy's close combat card. What was that one? Scorch. Villain Termerth. Destroy their strongest close combat cards if the combined strength is more than 10. But luckily, we don't have anything more than this Vesemir, so we shouldn't need to even worry about that. Well, that's good. Why did he use that? Oh, maybe because of that. <laughs> Whoops. So if we ever doubled our Vesemir strength, then he would get killed. It's interesting to like keep it in check. Our best hope is... I don't really have a best hope right now. We can't use our um, archer destroying card because we have archers. See, look, now he has... Yeah, he's using that. Luckily, we have um, a thing that'll bring back the archery thing. Oh man, but he just has a lot of cards. Oh, he's tw he is 10. So now look, he, he sort of set himself up so that if we do bring back our archers, then we will be screwing ourselves. Let's try and see what he has. He has five cards to our three. Man, all right. And that's doubling that. Oh. I don't like this, ladies and gents. I don't like this. All we can do is this. And if this doesn't work, then we lose. 34, and he has 36, so we already lost. And he has a 10. Okay, so we've clearly, clearly, clearly lost. He brought back another card. Not even close. Not even, not even within the same ballpark. Okay. <laughs> and he takes a card back. I guess technically we will get a uh, one more uh, card on this turn. Oh my god, he has a, a level 10. Oh, we don't get another card though. I don't have any cards. We, there's nothing we can do. Okay. He cleared the weather. There, the, the, we don't have anything to do. He passed. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. It wasn't as far... Oh, damn. Lost. You might look to your deck, change it up, do better. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I do actually want to change something about our Gwent deck. I'm going to remove all the elemental cards. We're going to take out this. Take out this. Take out Fighting Frost. And that'll make it so that it is more likely for us to get uh, the cards we actually want. You know what? Let's try it one more time. Let's try it one more time. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hmm. Inkeep, up for a round of cards? Of course I am. Shall we play? Let's. Okay, here we go. One more try at this. Decoy, clear weather, two level ones. 
I like to have level ones, but I I want to be able to switch something out. We don't have any like truly great card. I guess we could pull out this. We don't have anything with the same name. I need to find another one of these. We don't have any doubles of that. Do we have anything we would want to take? So this, this favors an aggressive place out at the beginning. I'm gonna take out one of these. We got another level one. Plus one to all units in the row. That's pretty good, especially because of these. Should I take back the decoy? We're gonna go with these. Okay, here we go. Past. Okay. See, the problem is now I have to use three of my cards. to waste the Zoltan card. Damn. But we got a new card. Okay, well that's fine. So we have we we're going to try and win this round. We don't have to, but... I think we're going to try. Oh, he's scorching me. Oh, crap. Dang it. Alright, well played, well played. pull her back now because she got killed so we can put in a card that we want and then pull it back this is the only round where we'll be able to do that let's try this we don't want to waste this guy Ugh. Okay, this is a good card and I don't want him to have it. What if we decoy Vesemir back out? He's looking at three of our cards. Damn, I thought he would waste another card. We're gonna pass. We both have six cards. Mm, I do have one archer. So I can't really use my archery thing. Ah. All right, um. If we were really taking advantage of the archery, like the thing that kills archery, then we wouldn't use any archers in our, in our deck. <sighs> um. I don't really have a great idea here. A 
Let's pass. Yeah, I wish we could have gotten him to, to waste more of his cards. Damn, yeah, now he's putting in his actual good cards. And he gets a discard. Ugh. And he still has this stupid dragon thing. So luckily we don't have any really good uh, close combat cards. I think we're going to lose again. Okay. Damn, he gets another discard. Ugh. I think mathematically we can't win. Unless he doesn't have any more cards. Hold on a sec, ladies and gents. Oh! He had to do it, didn't he? So if we remove his card, he'll be at 25 plus 1 is 26. We'll be at 24 plus 1 is 25. We'll lose by one single point. Oh man, that really stings. Damn. Let's just see if I made a miscalculation somehow. I don't think I did. I can't even use this. Did I already use it? Oh, I don't have Impenetrable Fog in my deck. I didn't realize, I thought this would spawn Impenetrable Fog. I didn't know it would actually, well, that screwed me multiple times over then. All right, we lose. So we have to have one Damn. in our deck. Lost. You might look to you. Put in this. Good. Now, let's do this, because clearly this deck is focused on killing archers. So we don't want to focus most of our strength into archery. I mean that seems pretty uh pretty definite. So we need to have 25 unit cards, I believe. So let's at least make most of our archers be unskilled. No, we don't have it. We won't have enough cards. How many do you need? We need 22 cards in total. So let's have like a couple of good ones. What does this guy do? Grinford Reaver. Garrison, you're using Northern Realm? Yeah, we uh, don't have enough cards for any of the other realms though. Eventually I would like to have other ones. Let's see. Yeah, let's have two archery cards and then that's it. So it's gonna be really, um, I guess, like D focused on archery. Yeah, it's still pretty early game, so I'm not that concerned that we. I mean, sometimes you just have a worse deck. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing to do about it yet. But it still stings when you can't, when you can't win a fight. Look, they're all running from the rain, I think. That's pretty cool.
Alright, here we go. We have to go to the front door of this whatever it is. Fortress. Here we go. Find the Baron. Hey yeah. Whoa. What's going on? Everybody's inside. Except for you. Whoa! What? What's here? Who's fighting me and why? Why are you fighting me? I'm supposed to be able to block arrows. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, baby! Shut up and fight. I wonder why that happened. Oh look, all the doors seem to be locked. If there's no uh, henchmen around though, that means we can loot all the outside areas. Go through, Roach. Go, dang it. Faster. There you go. T Bauer, welcome to the stream. <clears throat> Here you get an exclamation mark high for T Bauer joining the show. We are playing The Witcher 3. Halt! Who goes there? Baron home? Not your concern. Need to talk to him. Open the gate. Not a chance. We heard what happened at the crossroads. We'll not let a man like that in here. Search the village to find Won't another way in into the way. castle. Gotta find another. Ought to look among the villagers. Might find one brave enough to help me. Roach is uh, able to walk straight through that gate, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Can we go in this house? No, it's locked. All the houses are probably going to be locked. Although we were able to go in them when we came in here earlier. I think if we had the mission selected, that's what like triggered this event. Interesting. How about that? Takes a tired old man not to panic and run when I appear. Oh, I knew this guy would be significant. I called it. Greetings. Greetings to you. Other villagers all scurried off soon as they saw me. You didn't. Oh, oh I'm too old to scurry. Besides, what could you do to me? Kill me? Go ahead. I've not long to live. Tamioid? Wouldn't work. With skins right brittle. Lived here long? Mm. Since I was born. Reckon that'll be more than 70 winters. Must know the area well. Not bad. Listen, I gotta get inside the fortress. 
Can I do that without going through the front gate? You can, but few know the way. If you were to make an humble offering, call it to this humble man, maybe I could point you in the right direction. Fine. Don't really feel like arguing with the guards. Years back, when the old lord still ruled Crow's Perch, the blacksmith's boy went missing. Old village looked for him. No luck. Finally found the boy in the river. He drowned. Tragic. But how's that supposed to help me? A few days on, an old woman who served the lord found the boy's cap near the castle well. So, either he lost it there or he fell in the well. Clever man. Village folk built a shrine where they found the lad's body, northwest of here. Wait till you find an entrance to a passage nearby. Shrine? Where is it exactly? Track that weaves through the village. Follow it to the bridge. Turn right past that, then go on, straight as piss, till you get to a crossroads. Turn right again, then follow that path up a hill. Shrine stands upon it. Right past the bridge, then right again. I'll find it, thanks. Good stuff. Alright, let's give it a look. I want to go straight as piss. Hey, cute Chibi Choo, coming in with the raid. Thank you to cute Chibi Choo for the raid. Can we get some hype in that chat, ladies and gents? For our raiders joining the stream, how is your stream, cute Chibi Choo? Are you still playing the DS2, the Dark Souls? Let's get a shout out in here. Cute Chibi Choo playing. Scholar, nice. How are you enjoying the game? I saw you fighting the, uh, I think it was the horse. Yeah, the ho horseman guy, or like the chariot riding guy. Still playing DS2, nice. Are you enjoying it? What is, what is your thought? I've never played Dark Souls with um, summons before. It looks like a, a totally different way to play the game. It looks like fun. Uh, it's challenging, yeah, <laughs> definitely. We're, we're playing Bloodborne on our uh, playthrough right now. We've been going through the Souls series in release order. So we did Demon Souls, we did Dark Souls 1, we did Dark Souls 2 and all the DLC. And now we're on uh, Demon Souls, which or rather on uh, Bloodborne, which I'm enjoying a whole lot because I stayed away from everything about that game. So the fumbling uh, is, there's much fumbling, but I, I'm very much enjoying it. Thank you so much to QTB2 for sharing your community with me. It is very much appreciated. Welcome in, welcome John Doe as well into the stream. Guys, thank you so much for joining the channel. If you haven't checked out, first of all, QTB2, then go head over on there on that shout out link. I'll post another shout out in here. We just met Cute Chibi Chu, and I'm looking forward to seeing more shows and to join along with the uh, the Dark Souls to run. And uh, if anybody doesn't know my channel, it's called The Voice of Nick. I play video games live three times a day and seven days a week. It's all story focused games on here, and I don't talk over the story or cutscene moments, but we do call them ultra blind playthroughs on here. So, what that means is that I request no one utilize their own pre existing knowledge of the game or suggest what to do in the game, whether or not they've played it before. If you want to see more of what happens on the channel, you can type exclamation mark games in the chat. You'll get a full list of all eight concurrent gameplay series going now, including The Witcher 3, the game we're playing at this very moment. Welcome in, everybody, into the stream. QTB2 is going to head to bed. Have a great stream and a good night. Thank you so much for sharing your community with me. It is very much appreciated. And let's get an exclamation mark night for QTB2 